Over the years, I've talked to hundreds of guys in chairs, and one of the most common themes is that they're in wheelchairs that just don't fit right. I've been in this chair for three years now, and there's still some things I want to change about it. So today, I'm here at Hands-On Concepts in San Diego to get me a chair that fits exactly how I want it. I first got introduced to Hands-On Concepts by using one of their products called Dees Locks. They're my favorite braking system for wheelchairs. I started tagging them on Instagram and I looked at their page and realized they make these really awesome custom wheelchairs too. Today, I'm gonna get measured for my new custom wheelchair. And the first thing we're gonna do is talk about all the things I like and don't like about this chair. So I'm here with Eric. He's gonna kinda help me through this measurement process. So one of the things that I've most recently realized is that I keep finding myself trying to push myself back further in the chair. I keep trying to like sit myself back. Also, I find myself getting a little wiggly to the left and the right. I feel like I have too much play. Like there's too much space I have in this area. I really like my center of balance and my bucket because I can just kind of like, you know, kick it up how I do, but it still feels like I'm too short. I feel like I'm like, like compact. Um, I am a fan of, of my bucket depth and the, the rigid back but I'm also open to trying new things. Um, clothing guards are awesome. I really like my taper, but I always find my feet going to the left. I think that might have to do with the fact that like my feet don't fully touch down towards the back. They only touch towards the front. And that was kind of sold to me originally by the person who put fit me was going, oh, well, you don't know what kind of shoes you're gonna wear. If you wear bigger shoes, you want some more play room. But I always kind of find myself wearing the same shoes. Um, I do like the strap, but I'm not sure I like where it's placed. I feel like sometimes it kind of cuts into the back of my ankle, especially if I like wear shorts or something like that. I would like to be able to push this back further so that I can sink further into my chair. But when I do do that, these, these poles kind of go into like my back because I'm a little wide, I'm a wider guy. This angle was poorly chosen. I can throw this back a good inch mm -hmm. and I would be real comfortable, except that these would be stabbing. I just, I like to be, like I said, like deep in back, but currently I feel like I'm kind of, I feel like I'm sitting like this. But all in all, I mean, the, the chair itself is, is not bad. It's just all these like little things I feel could be more precise and more, more optimal. Now that they're gonna take some basic measurements, throw me in a couple of different chairs and see if I can get a feel for what I really like. All right, so Eric right here is taking a few measurements that are going to quantify into what is called the dump or the seat bucket. It's the difference between the height of this point and this point over the distance of the wheelchair. Usually people with a higher level of injury that have less core strength prefer a deeper bucket so that they can be more wedged in the chair and have more balance. If you're someone like myself who has a lower level of entry that has full core strength, you have the ability to have a higher bucket. So I know this can be completely overwhelming and this is a lot of information to pay attention to, but just know that even if you don't come to hands-on concepts, with your therapist, you're also gonna have to go through a measurement sheet just like this. So you wanna be informed as much as possible to get the right chair for you. So the next measurement we're about to take is called center of gravity. I like to have my axle measured just underneath my butt, so at any time I have the ability to pop a wheelie without even touching my wheelchair. So if I'm going at speed down a hill and there's a tree branch or a bump or a rock in the way, I can simply kick myself up and not have to worry about doing a full entire wheelie. I know exactly how tippy I want my center of gravity. If you're a newer wheelchair user, it's definitely good to have a chair that has some adjustability to it so you can start with a center of gravity that doesn't require as much balance and then slowly work your way into a more tippy center of gravity. We are now measuring wheelbase. So the way we measure wheelbase is the measurement from center of rear wheel to center of caster housing. 
The longer the wheelbase, the more stable the chair when it comes to any type of forward tipping. However, the shorter the wheelbase, the more compact you are and the smaller places that you can get and turn around in smaller places. The longer the wheelbase, the longer your chair. So your radius for turning is much larger. So he's now measuring how far the top of my backrest is from the ground so that they can get the perfect measurement for the back posts. So there's not this extra chunk of metal that's just hanging out here ready to poke into your sides. If you're measuring at home, iPhone has a really cool app called Measure. I think the default, it opens up in the bottom left, but you can just jump right over to the bottom right and it automatically brings a level up for you. So the measurement we're taking now is the width of my chair. If you remember from the beginning, one of my gripes was that I had a chair that I felt was a little too wide. They actually happen to have a chair that's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna jump into it and see how I like it. So when you are a newly injured wheelchair user and you are very first going to the seating clinic to get measured, sometimes they will intentionally put you in a chair a little bit wider than you need because they believe that you're going to put on weight because you're being inactive that wasn't my case I stayed about the same weight and strength all the way through my journey and I was really frustrated because my chair was bigger than it should have been so this chair is a little bit too tight and that is a one inch difference this is a 16 this is a 15 so now we're gonna try to find a way to modify this chair for a half inch measurement. So it'll be 15 and a half just to see how it feels. And this is one of the benefits of actually coming here to Hands-On Concepts is we can do little adjustment changes like this. So this is a quarter inch, this is a quarter inch. I'm gonna slide it into my side guards on each side and feel if that little measurement is enough to make me feel snug, but not too snug. I'm in it. That, that's the move, that's the move. So now we're gonna take the front of chair width. And this width is going to be a lot smaller than the width of my chair. And the reason why I chose that is because I like a taper to my chair. The difference between these front ends is just aesthetic. It depends on what look that you like the best. I like a taper to my chair. And what that means is from the front, it kind of tapers in. I like that so my feet don't slide across all over the place. And it makes you have a more slim and slick figure if your front taper is tighter. Now Eric is gonna take the measurement of the cast width. The more narrow your caster, the less doors you're gonna bang into because the casters are more inside than your actual wheels. The only caveat is you'll be a little bit more unstable. The wider your caster width, the more stable you'll be, but the more things you're gonna bang into and your turn radius, especially if you're spinning in a 360 in a tight bathroom, is going to be less. All right, now we are going to measure the foot plate width, height, depth, and angle, and then we're gonna decide what foot plate style that I wanna choose. So these are all our alternatives to calf straps. These we call a double foot hoop. This one just goes straight back, has no taper in it. This one has a little bit of taper, and this one's kind of like how we explain the ergo front end of a chair. It's got a bend and then goes straight back. Um, that's just to keep your feet kind of in place and don't splay in the back. And if you do prefer the calf strap, we do these little calf strap hoops so that you don't have to wrap around the front of the chair. That's actually genius because wrapping around the chair is, it goes, it slides. And sometimes when you're trying to put your foot back, it'll go up and up and up. And you're like, oh cool. Now I don't even have one. That is, that is, that's the complex thing for picking out foot plates is realizing like how diverse your shoe collection is gonna be. I know for me personally, um, I found a shoe that doesn't cause me pain, that doesn't give me any skin sores, that's lightweight, that's comfortable, and I pretty much only rock these shoes. But then I know people that have tons of different types of shoes. That's the only little bit of concern I have. These look so cool, but I think I'll probably just keep the calf strap. I think that's the move. All right, so we are now going to take the measurement of the overall length of chair. This is definitely important when it comes to navigating tight spaces because the length of your chair is the full radius circle of your chair. If you remember from the beginning of the video, one of my gripes was that I felt like I was too short, like I wasn't in the depth of my chair. We've decided that we're gonna add an inch to the chair and hopefully that will resolve that issue. Do you guys have a chair that is an inch longer than what I what we just measured? So we actually found a chair that does have a little bit of extra length to it. And ironically enough, 
same exact chair. So I'm gonna jump into it, roll around for a little bit and see how I like it. Now before, since I didn't know it was a longer chair, I wasn't paying attention to that. I was just paying attention to the width. So now I can pay attention to the length. As far as length goes, I like it so far. I kind of even like the center of gravity on it too. We are now going to be modifying this chair a little bit where we're gonna be moving some of the parts around to make it be as close to the measurements that we are gonna get the new chair in. Another huge benefit of us being in hands-on concepts is we're gonna just whack this part off. We're gonna straight up cut it off so it doesn't stab into my back anymore. All right, so now that we have made some modifications to this chair, it's hopefully going to mimic what a longer chair would feel like. So we're gonna see how it feels. So far, so good. It feels awesome. Ooh. Ooh, I like this a lot. That feels real good. So in my current chair, I have a cloth bottom in almost all chairs. That's the only option that you can have. Here at Hands-On Concepts, they have a carbon fiber option. So in order to simulate what a carbon fiber bottom is going to feel like, we are putting in chunks of carbon fiber over top of my cloth. We've got some in the back already that you guys don't see. One of the reasons why I'm excited about the carbon fiber is that over time it won't sag unlike the cloth ones. Uh, the only disadvantage to having the carbon fiber is if you transfer out of your shower onto your chair without the cushion on it, you might slip around and fall off and we don't want that to happen. I never transfer into my chair out of the shower so it's not an issue for me. The next part of the conversation is what kind of wheelchair I'm actually going to be getting from Hands On Concepts. Initially I was drawn to the Monoshock chair and the reason why I was attracted to it was because one, it looked cool, and I've got two other friends that are using it right now that will not stop shouting its praises. Um, the Monoshock system is a little bit heavier than the traditional rigid frame, and the guys here at Hands On Concepts were just talking to me about the pluses and the minuses, and how they talk more people out of the Monoshock because a lot of people believe that the benefits are going to be there for little small things like rolling down the road and, and running over a branch. But the, the real benefits are coming from more aggressive stuff. So if you're jumping over curb cuts, like the guy here in this chair, he's using a clip-on electric scooter to go zoom around town as primary form of transportation. That system, the shock makes a lot more sense. So I have to think about my activities of daily living and what I'm doing, and if it really qualifies for a monoshock system more than just how cool it looks. I'm gonna jump in it and test out some of the pros. I mean, okay, yeah, sure, but. How many of those you do in a week? I can't imagine a world where the added value of everyday use surpasses the added detractions of everyday use for at least my life and my lifestyle. I think I'm gonna go with the rigid instead of the suspension. All right, we just spent about the last 45 minutes fine tuning backrest and backrest measurements. The reason why that's so important to me is my posture is mostly dictated by my backrest and I wanted to make sure I get the most precise fit in order to have the more proper posture. You have to jump into a bunch of different chairs with a bunch of different styles of backrest. This is all dictated on what feels best to you. So we're currently discussing the clothing guard. This is another one of those things that I was never informed about in the beginning and wasn't even given an option. They just gave me a chair without clothing guards on it and it's this little piece of plastic that runs on the inside of the tire to keep your clothes from touching the tire or getting any dirt on them. I'm a big fan of the clothing guard from rolling around in rain so it doesn't spray up and get all over your clothes and I feel like I'm a little more snugly fit inside of my chair. The ones I'm gonna get are gonna have a cool little titanium rail above it and it'll be about a half inch off the tire all the way through. All right now that I have been completely measured we are gonna jump into the fun part Part, which is the final order form where we are going to actually pick out all the details that we discussed in the measurement process. So starting with the frame design, uh, we decided we're just gonna go with the rigid light. Ergo front end, footrest options. We're doing calf strap loops, carbon fiber foot plate, doing these locks. Yes. So these locks is an upgrade that you can get from Hands-On Concepts. Usually you're offered two different kinds of brake locking systems, and that's the scissor lock, and the other ones I don't know their names, but I call them thumb busters because you will hit your thumbs on them and it will hurt really bad. I choose to go with the D's locks because they're a quick switch that you flip them on and you flip them off. There's two little pistons that slide into the wheel hubs to kind of keep you in place. The scissor locks, you gotta clunk, 
conk real loud and when they get loose they also come out and auto engage and then the thumb busters again like i mentioned you will bust your thumbs these locks is how i got introduced to hands-on concepts there's a little few things on them that i'm not a big fan of the fact that they kind of wobble just a little bit when they're fully engaged but that is not something to gripe about i am way a huge fan regardless if there's like a slight little wobble on them so now we have caster fork options yeah i'm a big fan of the single side so let's stick with that i know some of the other dual forks they tend to like catch on things um, from my experience because it makes your casters a little bit wider a dual fork means you got one of these on each side the single fork just means you have this one on this side i don't have to worry about the outside of a caster fork smashing into anything okay so for the forks do you want them to be any color you just want to go with black let's go with black since the rest of the chair is gonna have some carbon fiber accessories and some other black accessories, but I, I wanna have my, my casters, I want them silver. Speaking of colors, let me just make one thing clear. You have to remember that your wheelchair is also a fashion choice, meaning that it has to match all of the clothes and all of the activities and all of the other things that you're doing around town. You may think you want a bright colored wheelchair with a bunch of designs and accessories, but believe me, you do not. In my personal opinion, it's better to get something that's silver or titanium because it doesn't show scratches. I had a black chair in the beginning and I liked it because it was sleek and it was all blacked out, but every time I got a single nick or a scratch, it showed drastically. And I've had plenty of friends that I know that have got orange chairs, blue chairs, pink chairs, green chairs, and they liked them until they realized that that was the color they were stuck with forever. That's like having a bright green t-shirt you have to wear to all events and all occasions. Being on a wheelchair already attracts enough of unwanted attention. So the brighter your wheelchair will even add more attention to that. And if that's something you want, sure, but I know that's not something I want. All right, one more last rant before I get finished. Accessories, don't overdo the accessories, guys. Please don't overdo the accessories. They add weight, they're cumbersome, they're really goofy. Please use your accessories in moderation or none at all. In my personal opinion, minimalism when it comes to your chair is the best option. You don't want to have bags and flaps and straps and armrests and push handles and like all these extra things that you don't need. Now, if you need those things, get them. I'm not saying don't get them, but there are some things that are just completely unnecessary that people were trying to sell you. So just pay attention to that as well. So the casters that I chose are four inches tall and one one inch wide hard rolls. Uh, in the beginning, the soft rolls, I had a big problem with uh, running into like rocks and parts of curbs and some of the rubber would, would chunk off of them. I've been told that some of that urethane technology has been increased to be more tough, but I still just don't wanna take that risk. Also, the bigger your caster, the faster you go, the more wobble you get. So if you've got a big wheel and you're going fast, your caster is gonna go and it'll just be really freaky and scary and you might even crash because of it. So I personally don't get any caster wobble at all at the hard roll four inch by one inch casters. I am keeping the 24 inch wheels that I currently have on this chair and just transitioning them over to the new chair. There's no need to buy another thousand dollar set of wheels. There are also tons of custom fabrications that hands-on concepts can do. I personally don't need or want any custom fabrications, but anything you can think of, they can can fabricate. You gotta remember, they're working with metal. They can pretty much do whatever you want. There's everything from key holders, stereo holders, grocery bag holders, permanent attachments for your external accessories built onto your chair, even if it's something you think of when you're here. They have the ability to custom fab whatever you need. All right, now my wheelchair order is complete. One of the things that's really cool that Hands On Concepts offers is the ability to fly out on a Sunday, be here Monday morning, get measured, spend a week in San Diego, and pick up your wheelchair on Friday. That is completely unheard of in the wheelchair world. One week for a brand new custom wheelchair. However, if you don't fly out here, the lead time is a little bit further. You're gonna have to wait a little bit longer in order to get your wheelchair. But if you want to call and set up a time to fly in and get measured, you can have a chair in one week. We're gonna be driving up to LA to shoot some videos and attend a YouTube conference. The next time you see us, we'll be here again picking up my new wheelchair.
it has been one week. We are back at Hands On Concepts and I'm about to go check out my brand new chair. Let's go. excited about this. It'll be the first time transferring into my brand new hands-on concepts chair. Oh, let's see how it feels. Dude, it fits like a glove, man. Like, oh yeah, that feels real nice. Like center of gravity feels good. All the width feels good. I'm really excited about these clothing guards, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I don't know why I'm so excited about these clothing guards, because like, I've never had ones that are welded in. This new back, the strap feels good. This is really cool. All right, time to fly back to Atlanta. All right, so I'm back in Atlanta and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts. But there's gonna be another video that comes after this that's gonna be a complete review, so stay tuned for that. So I've been using this wheelchair for about four weeks now and I gotta tell you, the build quality is absolutely excellent and the measurements were on point. I've only had to make two minor adjustments to get it exactly how I want it. And compared to my previous chairs that I've had to mess with for at least a month, this is absolutely awesome. Now after watching this video, you're probably so stoked and ready to call Hands On Con Concepts right now and be like, yo, give me a chair. I gotta get one. But just know that this chair is for seasoned wheelchair users that know exactly what they want and exactly what they don't want in a wheelchair. But don't worry, if you're a new wheelchair user and you need something with a little bit of adjustability, Hands On Concepts is currently working on making adjustable chairs that will work for you. I'm recording this video in November 2019, so if you're watching this in the future, please be sure to contact them and see what the progress is with those chairs. Also, don't forget to tell them that I sent you. It's real important that you do that. My first time picking out a wheelchair was a complete disaster. And if I would have had a video like this, it would have completely changed everything for me. If you've gotten value out of this video, please support me on Patreon so I can continue to make videos just like this. Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.